Kevin McCreary. And Alan talking about movies. They may be best friends, but they always disagree. Kevin McCreary. And Alan, I seen that. So, Kevin, you have a YouTube channel called Say Goodnight I Kevin. Do. Uh, yes, that's youtube.com slash say goodnight Kevin. Where did that name come from? Uh, well, it's mainly it's from uh, the the movie Home Alone. Okay. Uh, there's this joke in there where the mom is, it's not really a joke, but the mom's like, say goodnight Kevin. And Kevin McAllister is like, goodnight Kevin. Yeah. And that's where it comes from. Uh, one night I was, I was, um, I was I I'd done video stuff for a long time and one night I was like, you know what? I should just start a YouTube channel. Then I have it and if nobody watches it, great. If some people watch it, also great. And so I I was I it was late at night and I was like, "Oh, I it should be about how like just stuff that I put together whenever I should have gone to bed because I was working at the time." So, I was like, "I'll just I'll stay up late. I'll make stuff and then that'll be my creative outlet for right now and I don't have to depend on other people because that's really the that's really the thing that is difficult whenever you're working on creative stuff is if other people are involved with you yeah then you have to depend on them doing things too and I tend to be the person who I will just do all the things because I really well if it's my project that I want done yeah and so I was like why don't I just start from the beginning and say I'll just do all the things and so that's that's why why it started and then it grew from there um people did watch it i was just saying stuff like just doing a a blog vlog sort of thing where i'm like five things that girls like about guys or something like that and um and then i as a joke did a movie review of the left behind movie and then people were of the original the kirk cameron um, one yeah the kirk cameron one and they were like, hey, when's the next one coming out? And I was like, oh, uh, I guess I could do another one. So, And so your whole channel now is, would you say it's mostly Christian media? Is that that's kind of the yeah, focus? Yeah, I would say so. I mainly focus on uh, the family. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mainly focus on um, reviewing Christian media. Yeah. It, it's old and new. Like, I have a lot of fun reviewing old stuff that, that I remember as a kid. Uh, you know McGee and me yeah. and things like that and then um, but then it can be it, it can be new stuff that comes out I, you know it could I try to do some other stuff and then I, a big part of the reason why I was able to start doing movie reviews just kind of out of the blue was because I kind of set it up to where my channel was just me doing stuff and so I was able to make a channel like i could just experiment with stuff and i've it's always been i've known people who have youtube channels and it's it's about this particular thing and they feel stuck because they're like man i i just do the same thing every time and i didn't want that yeah i wanted to have the freedom i wanted my audience to expect that i might make just some random thing every now and then and so so you're doing kind of, kitchen gadget kitchen gadget reviews next? Is that your yeah name? yeah you know I'm just like hey here's um here's a new toy I'm gonna unbox it everybody <laughs> uh, so, so that's that's kind of I've maintained that I think I mainly I do two types of videos now yeah. I do like a, a full on movie review and then I do reaction videos which are basically like what we're doing right now where I'm looking at something on the screen. I've got the camera up there and I just watch it and talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that could be anything. A lot of times that's, that's Christian, Christian movie trailers and stuff, but sometimes it's just whatever I find interesting. So I found your channel because I did a, well, we did all three movies, uh, the God's not dead series with my friend who I think considers himself an, an atheist. I think that's fair. I might okay. be misrepresenting his beliefs, but if I am, sorry. Uh, definitely not a Christian <laughs> but is the main point. But do you believe he's an atheist? I believe are it, you I Are you agnostic to I, I, his atheism? <laughs> um, I'm undecided. I'm more spiritual okay. about it right yeah. now. You know, just kind of. <laughs> uh, but so we watched the first two and they're terrible. They're like, mm. 
you know, mm. me coming from a Christian perspective and him coming from his possibly atheist perspective, we both were like, these are bad. These are terrible. Yeah. We watched a third and we were both like, oh, wow, this is actually okay. This is pretty good. And he was like, I like it, but I, I know what they're trying to do. I know they're trying to trick me. And so I was like looking <laughs> at it like, man, this is a bad thing that Christians are doing. If that's the, if you actually make a good movie and you make solid points and you're actually critiquing yourself, but they're like, no, you're just trying to trick me. That's mm. not a good evangelism tool, which I think they think they are. Maybe I don't. Oh yeah. I don't, yeah. Uh, the makers of, of that movie, not the director, I don't think, but the people behind the movie believe that they're, um, they're reaching college students. That's what they wanted to do with that movie yeah. is speak to, you know, look, we've got all these college students leaving the church and this crazy record numbers. Uh, how could we stop it? Well, here, God's Not Dead 3. Yeah. Will this do it? <laughs> and so, <laughs> it didn't do it. No. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> well, no one saw it. No one. I've talked to a lot of people who said, yeah, I watched the first two. And I was like, ah, well, the third is actually the best. So if you've watched the first two, it might be worth seeing the third, but it's not, I don't know, it, it's disappointing. Yeah, you don't want to, you don't want to say like, hey, you gotta, you don't want to really endorse it. It's not worth <laughs> yeah. telling them, oh, you haven't seen it? You've got to see it. No, it's just like, oh, you haven't seen it? Well, if you happen to have come across it, you might be pleasantly surprised. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the- I agree. It's definitely better and it's definitely a critique in a way on the original movies yeah that so that's where i see the value in on as the, much as it can be the third one is them almost apologizing for the first yeah. two and so it's like you should only watch the third one if you've watched the first two but don't watch the first two because those are really bad yeah it's, it's like a weird catch-22 <laughs> <laughs> but uh so someone in the comments was like hey you should check out say good night kevin and i went and found your channel and i started watching your videos and i was like this guy gets it like he seems to you seem to understand everything that i feel about these dumb movies because it's so (laughs) frustrating to watch them and be like what are you trying to do other than create an own your own echo chamber and pretend Mm -hmm. you're a martyr like that's what uh, yeah what is going on in the most christian friendly country in the world yes in history yes it's insane to me and so I, i started watching channels reached out to you and wanted to see if you would talk to me about saving christmas which i think is ah, one of the classic. worst it's definitely <laughs> so we have this thing on our patreon where whoever between me and my co-host taylor whoever has the least amount of votes has to watch a bad movie chosen by the other guy he chose saving christmas and it broke my spirit it hurt me so deeply and it was so bad i'm still not sure what happened in that movie Movies like that are are wonderful to me, yeah. Because it's it's rare. Um, I think the 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 other the only one that's more perfectly awful is that is that um, Kevin Sorbo "Let There Be Light" with okay. uh, produced by Sean Hannity is it's just <laughs> <That's a> good... <laughs> it came out last year, and yeah. my friend Josh and I went to see it in theaters, and it was. We were just like the whole way home. We were like, what? We were remembering moments from it where we're like, oh, remember the part where this? Oh, my gosh, you're right. How did that? It's just so bad. It's really yeah. bad. It's hard to describe. I describe it a lot because I did a review of it. Uh, <laughs> but I, I that movie almost broke me, I think, because I was like, I think that this is it. Like, I don't think I'll ever get another Christian movie this bad. I, I feel like people people's eyes will be opened and they'll see this and say oh okay maybe maybe we and and j- right after that i saw god's not dead 3 and i saw um i can only imagine which was not great i don't think but it was at least not that and i was like oh christian movies have gotten better which is good yeah but also that's not great for my channel <laughs> <laughs> so uh but also, um, the Trump prophecy came out this month, so yeah, uh, no worries. There are still bad Christian movies. <laughs> well, okay, so Saving Christmas, I, Kirk Cameron makes three points, and I don't okay. understand any of them. 
did you what did you, what was your opinion well, give it refresh me because uh so there was i saw that and and i reviewed it and then i think i repressed some of those memories rightfully so yeah uh, <laughs> he starts off um i want to say it was the swaddling cloths right so the guy so they're in the car which mm-hmm. is a great you know great location yeah great look they're like Hey, hey, guys, we're going to film during this party. Okay, hey, you're being too loud. Well, can't you go somewhere else? I guess we can go to the car. All right, like, we'll finish the movie there. That's the worst part about YouTube vlogs is when people just hold the camera up in the car. Like, the <laughs> and that's what that felt like. But uh, Hey, I'm uh, filming on the way to work. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The, the uh, So there's the swaddling cloth in response to him saying, we are distracted by all this stuff, by the trees, by the lights, mm. by the you know, all the parties and all this stuff. And he's, Kirk Cameron's like, all right, well, let's take all that away. Even Jesus, here's the swaddling cloth. And then he, he says it for a couple minutes, but there's never any point. Like, I was like, where is this going? Like, what is this refuting? They cut back to the car and they're just like, wow, yeah, I never thought about the swaddling cloth before. And my mind just broke in that instant. I was like, what is going on? Why is this? What, what I is this? I never ha- thought about that before. <laughs> like, and it just, it was a similar thing to God's Not Dead 1, where they mm-hmm. would cut into the end of a statement. So they, yeah. they'd be like, and because of all of and that, this is true. That's why God exists. Yeah. And it was just like, if your point is to prove something, if it's like a- right apologetics movie you got to throw some of that in there you got to use some of it you can't just cut into the end or cut into proving a fictional character wrong yes right that's that's a quintessential straw man as often as straw man straw man is used in internet arguments that's a real one yes where you build up your character and then you tear it down and and nobody was saying the thing that that character was presenting yeah. that's what i don't get about saving christmas is that the guy is supposed to be a christian that he's arguing with he's just yeah. like why are we doing who has that mindset well of, I, I think i might actually i think i re- oh so he's he's you I, yeah i related to that you're guy the guy quite a bit <laughs> like yeah because i like i i don't really like christmas myself i i get the yeah. idea i get the i love it do you so all right, yeah, well, we're we about to fight. That. Just <laughs> <laughs> the, bring uh, it on. I I get the idea of like, oh, this is the time to worship Christ. But everything, oh, I don't, I don't like it for that reason. Yeah, I like it for nostalgic purposes strictly. I'm like, well, oh yeah, Christmas. So I so yeah. I don't like it because my family has kind of fallen apart from when I was a little kid. Like my extended family oh great and so every christmas is how am i gonna beat that story? (laughs) and so every christmas it's kind of like a oh yeah this sucks like i was so unaware of all this stuff that was actually going on and so Uh then so when i tell people i'm like i'm not really a fan of christmas they're like you have to like christmas because it's about christ i'm like is it though you can't you can't force me to to like it because Mm -hmm. it we say it's about christ and then i start looking and it's like well santa's not about christ where is that? How does that fit in? Materialism. Um, if you watch my bargain bin episode yeah. with St. Nicholas, you'll learn all about where Santa Claus comes from. Well, I learned about it in Saving Christmas, and he, he punched a guy. And oh, yeah, yeah. And the... the <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't... That's not a fake story yeah. entirely, what he says. I mean, the slow motion and all that stuff is, isn't... It's not real footage. I thought th- you don't go in slow motion when you get in fist fights. Ooh, uh, <laughs> man, like he told the story very poorly. Yes. And Saint that Saint Nicholas was not that Saint Nicholas was kind of wrong. Yes. To punch a guy. Yeah. I would say. Yeah. <laughs> it's not very to infringe. Turn the other cheeky. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's rather cheeky, but not turn the other cheeky. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, go ahead. So, swaddling clothes, never thought about that. Yeah, so there's that. Then the Santa Claus, St. Nicholas punching a guy was the second one. And then... What was what was the guy's point that made him bring up? Was it just that Santa has nothing to do with Christmas? Basically, And yeah. then the argument was, actually... He's a tough guy who he does. protects Jesus. Yeah. 
Hey. That does that sound like a wimpy <laughs> elf to you? Yeah, because <laughs> that that was the thing. That was his point. The the main guy who doesn't like Christmas, he's like, "Oh, are you gonna f- bring up a verse where there's an elf in the Bible or something like that?" And you make a point in your video how they keep hitting that same joke over and over and over, which is super yeah. funny. But the because uh, yeah. uh, they only had one day, I, I don't know how long it took them to make that. But it, I just imagine. I probably say this in my review. I just imagined Kirk Cameron got a new camera and they had their church Christmas party and they're like, let's make a movie. Yeah, well, they definitely then, are stretching. The, that yeah. dance scene at the end is so <laughs> long. They're like, we have to get to 90 <laughs> minutes, guys. We gotta. People got mad at me because I, edit, I edited that in my review. Yeah. Kirk Cameron like does the worm. Uh, uh, the worm. <laughs> and so I edited it. So he's like humping the ground. <laughs> And uh, how, how, what is they can the re- get over it because it's hilarious. <laughs> what, what is the response for your channel from Christians? Is it po- supportive, negative? What do you find? All, all across the board. Um, I, I'm actually surprised at how few Christians get upset. Mm. Um, I, the other day I put out a response to the Trump prophecy video yeah and got several emails okay uh of people who were upset because um because i said what did I, oh because the movie is about praying for our leaders yeah and so sometimes i i can get i'm i'm pretty anti-government yeah and so i'm like just who cares burn it all down yeah just just get rid of it and um and you know why are we all trying to we all hate each other because everybody else is uh beliefs affect us because we all pick who's in charge yeah. through a popularity contest and so the, but that's the, you don't have to believe that stuff yeah. but i i'll just say that stuff every now and then and so i was like who who cares about you know praying for these leaders you you guys can do it if you want but i think the more important thing is that we stop looking to these people as spiritual leaders as yes. like that mm-hmm. our country as a collective, will be more Christian based on how Christian our leaders are. Yeah. I think that that's a poor. That's a terrible benchmark. idea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so I, <laughs> like, I kind of said that, but I said it in a pretty sarcastic way. And so I had people say, "Well, the Bible says we're supposed to pray for our leaders," and it does. It does say that. Yes. So, so do it. And I'm not saying not to do it. Well, the bu- I don't, because I'm not. I don't care about the leaders i don't i don't think what they do is as important as the people in my life and i'd rather focus my attentions on those people yeah but yeah the best example of a nation being run by quote-unquote christians would be the israelites and they didn't do a great job at it i mean if you you look at the bible like that's not not quite the goal we should be aiming for and we we want to say oh america is is a this Christian nation because I hear that a lot here in Thailand. Is mm. a lot of my Christian friends will be like, "Oh, your country used to be so great and so focused on God." I'm like, "Ah, that's an mm. interesting yeah. narrative, but it's not really yeah. accurate to the reality." Because it's funny to say that stuff about a country that's super individualistic, America yeah. and the American dream and all of that, which I like. I I I like that. Yeah. So there are there have been lots of Christians in America. And there have been lots of uh, all throughout the history, but as a collective, um, there have been some, and there have not been some. Yeah, yeah, and, and the, they're all individuals, the, and that's what's great about the country. Which is also what makes it so difficult to be authentically Christian, because yeah. that the selfishness really just goes against pretty much everything the Bible says. But America's like it's all about yourself, so you got to constantly you know, battle with all that and yeah. use it to yeah. your, your advantage. But And I think that there's a biblical aspect, not necessarily of selfishness, but but to me I like to take the approach of the the of as for me and my house sort of thing. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. you do need to have your house in order. You do need to get your stuff together. Yeah. First. For sure. Before you can try to fix other people. Yeah. Uh get the plank out of your eye. And I think that's more the perspective, you know, the, when I think of individualism, I, of course, s- being, being generous and, and caring for other people is important. But if you, if you, if you're a mess, then 
stop trying to control other people's lives. Yeah, you're not going to be, you know, a lot of help. Yeah. <laughs> so that's more what I mean yeah. when I say, uh, though you're right. America is very, Americans are very self-centered, very American bubble. I'm sure you being in another country see, see this from a better perspective, but there is an American bubble that. Oh yeah. Yeah. That you get in. But it's the same here too, right? Like they have, it's just in a different way. It's like in a, like I was saying a different color earlier, which was a bad term, but it's a different sure. package <laughs> of, uh the way we do it like everyone ultimately everyone comes down to just being selfish is no matter yeah. what culture you're from which community you're yeah. from but that's true we all are yeah but christian um, movies the most selfish yes i would say well um yeah <laughs> christian movies are so funny because i don't think they'll ever be good because no. mm -hmm. the the whole concept of oh you you know what you were asking me about how people respond yeah i think that I think that because I'm a Christian and I take the, but I take, I get people who say, Hey, I'm an atheist, but I like your channel. And I get people who say, well, you're a little snarky, uh, for a Christian, but I think you make a lot of good points. And so I think that there's a spectrum, a pretty wide spectrum of people who appreciate the things that I say, like what you were saying. Um, there's not a, there's not enough people saying, you know what? They're stupid stuff in our faith yeah and let's make fun let's make it okay to make fun of those things while still saying like, while still being serious yeah and saying okay but what is real what what is you know let's get let's make fun of the bathwater. yeah you know while not throwing out the baby yeah. baby jesus you know <laughs> in swaddling clothes the swaddling clothes i think one time i made a joke about planned parenthood making fun of planned parenthood yeah and got a lot got a lot of my not christian or maybe maybe christian i don't know i don't know their their soul yeah. but people who are more left leaning upset at me and i'm like look you watched a whole video making fun of christians and now you're upset cuz i made one joke at the expense of planned parenthood yeah. come on yeah come on the, you know just cuz it's your your people your thing <laughs> uh, and it wasn't even it was just cuz people say that planned parenthood I wasn't even making a statement. I was just, people say Planned Parenthood has like, you know, uh, it, it builds in black areas, like like it, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. poor areas and stuff because yeah. they're intentionally trying to go after uh, black Americans. And maybe, but that's the joke is that people think that. And maybe oh, it's yeah. true. And if you're upset about it, then just make sure it's not true. If somebody made fun of me for being a, a peacock, well, I'd say, well, that's a dumb thing because I'm not one of those. Yeah, yeah. So if if you're not the thing that I'm making fun of you for, then my joke just doesn't make sense. Yeah, yeah people are... And a lot of my jokes don't make sense. <laughs> so People can get it's perfect. extra sensitive over something they hold precious. And I think mm -hmm. especially Christians, for sure. The... Well, and especially very... things that People hold precious things that are very gray area, mm -hmm. I've noticed. You know, they'll get they'll get real... Like, I can't believe anybody would disagree with this thing that is very difficult to understand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like it's, it, it, this is a very gray area. It's, you know, people aren't arguing, you know, this this is a terrible topic to bring up on yeah, a podcast I've never been on, yeah. but <laughs> I'm bringing up abortion. So here we go. Yeah. Uh, the reason why abortion is such a, a controversial issue yeah. is because it's a very gray area. Yeah. You're talking about. Nobody's saying let's kill kids, and nobody's saying, um, you know, it's well, maybe somebody, but nobody's saying that it's it's murder that a woman has her her time of the month, or that a guy oh, yeah. doesn't impregnate a woman every time he he releases uh, his, his himself. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> but but yet there's a time in between those two things. Uh, and so the, the so the, the, the it's a gray area. Yeah, and definitely. So that's why something changes between the something two. Something changes between the two, and th that time of change becomes a topic of discussion because it's like, well, we wouldn't, we don't think of it as a baby, and then we do. What what's the time there? Yeah. So, I what frustrates me is whenever people on either side think that this is a very black and white. Well, it's obvious that you shouldn't murder babies, or, or it's obvious that this is just a, a, a clump of cells. 
It's not obvious. Yeah. That's why we're fighting over yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> and if people could understand, and that 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 applies to so many different things. I think the things that we argue the most about are very gray, nuanced, not black and white issues, uh, like like religion. Yeah. Like we don't. To me, I always say, I, and I think this is why. Um, I do have people who who watch my show who are atheists because I get it. Mm. Like it, I I don't. I'm I'm not an atheist, but I re- I get it. It makes sense. God isn't. You can't see him. Yeah. Well, like <laughs> and so the Bible. I, I get the Bible the, the, is the what the default would be. Well, then there isn't. Why would you just other than people telling me? Why would I believe that there's a God? And but then on the other side, it's like, well, look, everything comes from something. So we must, so that there's, it's a very gray area and I don't fault anybody for not understanding all of it because none of us do. Yeah. And people who pretend they do are lying. Yeah. <laughs> the, the Bible in itself is what tells you it's true, which I believe, but I also see why people would be like, why do you trust something that's, its own credit or its yeah, own it's authority. Reasoning. Yeah. And so it's like, no, oh, no, that makes sense. I understand why you would be like, no, that, that can't be real. Or that sounds like fantasy and all that. But I'm like, everything kind of breaks down to Lord of the Rings at the end of the day. There's nothing that sure. isn't magical because we exist, right? We, we are here. Yeah. So something crazy happened at some point to get us here. I believe it's this. Yep. But I understand why other people wouldn't or would think it's something else. That's where well, faith comes Well, and I get frustrated into. at at very like kind of I'm here and that's as far as I'm going to go. Um, yeah. Like atheists do that mm. too where they're like, well, I read The God Delusion and now I'm an atheist and I've joined this religion and it's called atheism. Yeah. Like to me, that's not, that's not any more rational yeah. than – following your parents religion it's the same yeah you know you're 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 doing the same thing the same thing happens with politics where they're like well my parents were republican now i follow bernie sanders for literally the same reason yeah. well th- why why give me your give give me your reasonings i'm not saying you're wrong i'm just saying if you're just following just prove the same, that you've thought about it for five minutes yeah <laughs> you know not just accepted that's, it that's my uh youtube channel's kind of uh mission statement is encouraging people to think for themselves yeah and i don't want people to agree with everything that i say on on anything because though i i don't think i say things that i haven't thought through i also have had people say hey i don't agree with you and here's the reasons why and then it gives me the opportunity it gives me more information and i'm like oh that that makes a lot of sense uh because everyone has different life experiences and that doesn't mean that everyone's truth is different but it does mean that what people have learned is different yeah and so learning from them means that you get to see a perspective and you understand like i did that that video i did a video recently where i kind of i didn't criticize myself but i i i just watched one of my old reviews from a few years ago after i'd met some of the directors of some of these movies and it wasn't just meeting the directors. I'd sat down and talked to them and, and you know, I got I got some perspective mm-hmm. from their side and it was really cool. And so I wanted to share that, but in a entertaining way. And I think some people, they felt some betrayal, like, well, but I thought you were on our side and I'm not on anybody's side. I'm just kind of on the side of, of truth. Yeah. In, I, I hate to say that because that sounds super pretentious. Like, well, I'm on the side You're of like truth. Superman. But I am on the side. <laughs> I am on the side of truth in the sense that if you give me information that's true or that, that is reasoned, then I'm really interested in it. Yeah. You know, I want to mm-hmm. hear about it. And I think that for me, what the reason I'm not an atheist has a lot to do with books like um, uh, like Thomas Aquinas' uh, uh, writings and... C.S. Lewis and um, uh, uh, Ch- G.K. Chesterton. These are books that are f- are from a perspective, not just of "Hey, I read this one thing, and now I think this way." And some of my friends also think that way, so I believe it. But they're they're rational, reasoned discussions. Yeah. Uh, that I think I think Christians share 
mirror Christianity a lot with uh, with atheists. Uh, I think it's I think Christians have a lot to learn from that book. Yeah, <laughs> in in the sense of being a little more open minded and understanding to people who are atheists yeah. or who are non believers. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, I didn't mean to hijack no, no. the discussion. No, you're all good. And, yeah, but the, that's those are th- I'm. This is fun. This is a lot of fun. I love talking about this stuff. Yeah, me too. This is, I like talking to people who are reasonable because I find the people who are, uh, the, like, this is the only truth. And you, dif- if you disagree with me, you have to be wrong are just insecure about what they actually believe. Oh yeah. And they're just, that's Christian movies in a nutshell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it just never, it's not a fun conversation. It's not get back to Christian movies, it's not fun to watch because it's propaganda at its core. It's you, you're creating art with the intent to give a message, not you were inspired. So you created art and those are two very different things. Like, yeah, I think I can't go to fear. I can't go to church and, you know, worship in a way to, with the intention to teach others how to, you know, come to Jesus. Like that's, that's not, that's not worship. You're if you're creating propaganda or if you're creating because that's a defense Christian movies get a lot like, no, it's Christian, you know, only focus on God, you know, everything you do, you don't. You, so it's good. We have Christian movies because they focus on God. And it's like, no, these are propaganda. These are bad and these are hurtful to everyone. It's giving a bad message to Christians and it's being damaging to people who are outside of that. And I think that. I think that it's there's also a shallowness. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's what I learned the most talking to some movie makers is they're just to them they're kind of like well it's just not very deep. Yeah. And here we are as maybe you and I are just kind of we're thinking a lot about stuff. Yeah. And so we're like well that's I feel talked down to whenever I watch this because what they're saying is. Yeah, we we know that already. Mm. Do you think that we don't know this, and so you have to tell us in this kind of flowery narrative? Yeah, um, we already know. So, like, give us something more. You, if you make a movie and you don't outright say and get down on your knees and and pray, dear Lord, you know, if you don't outright ask if you were to die today, do you know where you would go? <laughs> and then answer the question. Yeah. We it's fine we're not going to walk out of the theater confused. Yeah. But I think that there's this insecurity that people will walk out of the theater confused. Um, that, that was non-existent, at least the way the Bible portrays Christ when he walked away and didn't answer the questions and didn't answer when he told stories. Yeah. Um, you know, and the disciples are like, why, why didn't you tell them what the meaning of the, the parable of the seeds were? And he's like, what's wrong with you? You guys should already get it, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And well, he, I'm paraphrasing a bit. He turned away more people than he actually brought in. You know the yeah. the end of the feeding of the five thousand. He's like, if you don't accept me more than everyone else in your life, you're no good to me. And everyone's like, eh, I'm out, and then just left him. And then that's when he gets on the boat. You know, it's like he he wasn't looking for this like soft christianity that i think we want to create in america he's just like no i need you to be full in or don't do it like that's okay yeah if you don't want to be full in i get it i understand this is not easy this is hard but i see i see that kind of response from atheists too where where um where they'll kind of give a uh a a kind of kind of playing off of the emotion of a lot of Christians, a lot of the fear that, that they'll cause somebody to walk away. Yeah. Uh, you know, there, there was that Penn Jillette video that went around about how, if you don't, you know, if you really believe that people are going to die and go to hell, it's like not saving somebody from a, a train coming at them. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that would be if everything, if nothing had nuance mm-hmm. and, and everything was just, uh, if it was if it was about me yeah saving you then yes but it's not about me saving you and you trying to make me feel guilty about you being an atheist doesn't really work for me 
and I think it works for a lot of Christians, but who, in the end, I, that's not up to me. Like, I can't. Yeah, there's it, nothing you, you can, can do. do yeah. There's nothing I, I can do. I believe this. I can tell you about it, but I'm, I can't change you. And I, I can, I can, it's fine. If you, it's just, it's you saying that you don't, you're saying you don't believe something, but you know they do. So you're saying, oh, they they don't believe it. You're acting like you do believe it. Well, the I think the motivation <laughs> behind Pendulette's video was come at me hard so I can discredit you because yeah, that's what happens, right? You mm-hmm. when it when you get down to the point of faith, which every belief system comes down to some point of faith, whether you accept that the world started at the Big Bang or that God created it or whatever. You're, you're taking a leap of faith on hopes that your premise is true. When you get to down yeah. to that, it's really easy to discredit. And it's like, oh, no, you just right. believe in fairy tales. Because it's so, proving a negative. Yeah. You can't prove a negative. Yeah, exactly. And so that's the, the intention behind it. But that's not the point of the Bible of go and force people to be Christian. Otherwise, they're going to go to hell. It's go love these people. Go and you know, show yeah. them how much I care about them. Through the you know, show them how much I care about you by the way you care about them, and it's ultimately all about everything you do is your relationship with God, not about your relationship yeah. with others. You know, like yeah, as a mission- like I, I think I can answer Pendulette's question as to why people don't do that, uh, and some people do. A lot of Christians played that video around in, in churches and stuff, saying, um, you know. Hey, look! This, see, this is this is what atheists say we should do. Well, I don't I don't think Christians need to take advice from atheists when it comes to how to evangelize. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, I do think it's good to listen to them and listen to where they're coming from. But I think that the answer is uh, Penn Gillette's coming, starting with the premise that you believe in this thing, and he doesn't. Yeah. So why would he care? And in the same way, he's he's taking a very like. He's assuming that all Christians are really shallow in what they believe, and I think shallow Christians respond to that saying, oh, yeah, that is what I'm supposed to do, yeah. not realizing it's not, it's, you feel bad for him, and I feel bad for him as well, but in the end, it's between him and God. It's not, I, it's not up to me. Yeah. Yeah, I, like, um, as a missionary, it's, it's always been an interesting thing I've, like, chewed on. It's like, well, what does evangelism actually look like? Because, you know, we're called as Christians to go and make disciples. And the, the model of that from Christ is, you know, live with people, let them see every part of you and focus on yourself on like refining yourself to God's character. And that will affect people around you. And there's that whole saying like, Oh, you know, always tell people about Jesus and sometimes use your words or whatever it is, which (laughs) is goofy, but like, and that's not what I'm saying about, you know, showing people your life, but you should be intentional. Well, no, I mean it, it's not wrong. Doing. Yeah. It's it's a it's a overused statement, but it's true. Yeah. And so it's every I don't know, because it's just hard is what it comes down to. And anyone who tells you it's easy is lying to you. It's basically it's Yeah. Anyone who is sure about anything, you should be suspect of because I'm smarter now than I was five years ago. At least I hope. I think I am. My understanding of God is deeper than it was five years ago. And I fully expect it to change and get deeper in five years from now. So if I'm telling you, this is exactly how it is. And in five years, I'm like, oh, I was wrong. Sorry. It's like, (laughs) that's a bad thing. You know, like we should be aware of that as Christians. And I think that as, I think that that's just being older. Yeah. I don't know how old you are, but I'm 32. Yeah, I just turned 32. I think 30 year olds often well, at least the best generation I think we I think. Yeah, I think we find ourselves in this situation where we're like, "Oh man, I was I was really confident 5 years ago." Yeah. <laughs> Not so much anymore. <laughs> I'm I'm less confident in in what I believe, but I feel like I know more now, and I that's probably why. Well, we also have the a weird I think we grew up in a weird generation because we both would have been alive before the internet, at least cognizant of what life was like before the internet really took off versus mm-hmm. now. And it's like, oh yeah, back then you could just tell people something and they would believe it. Like you could. I think about stuff all the time that my dad said. He's like, yeah, you know this. And then 
now, like, you know, there's this couple who um, were in a Winnebago and they they put it in cruise control and then it ended up crashing. Well, that's not true. Yeah. It never happened. <laughs> <laughs> it's fake news. Yeah. But they didn't know that. Yeah, they had no way to really know. You had to trust people. <laughs> and so, like, I think there's this dying religion of Christianity that grew up in, you know, these straw man arguments or this, like, aggressive this is the truth and if you don't believe it then you're wrong and now we're we're adjusting to all of that with the the internet we're like oh wait no there's that's not that doesn't sound right that doesn't seem right and there's other opinions and yeah. other views and so much more access which is good and bad in so many different ways but i think right. ultimately because then you got you've got the oh yeah well that's been proven wrong yeah. google search first link here see yeah yeah <laughs> but and then and you've got the you know flat earth flat earthers finding each other yes yeah and uh you know dumb belief it's all about popping up. all about pyramid earth i don't know that's that's where i'm at right now yeah there's like yeah. all the the points all the mountains make a pyramid and that's the uh but it just spins really that's fast true. so it looks round is how it works <laughs> um, oh that's true <laughs> but yeah so uh oh go ahead what was the third thing the third thing... I, I was going to change the subject. Yeah. The th I was going to get back to the movie. So there was The Swaddling Cloth, St. Nicholas, uh -huh. and... Oh, what was it? It was... um. I know we talked about the Christmas tree and, and Martin Luther. <clears throat> yeah, the Christmas tree was but, one of them. Was that, was that the third one? And, but I, I feel like that was all kind of part of the same thing. Well, they all were... It was so confusing to, like, structurally as a movie... Because it's not... Do you think Kurt Cameron ever thought... Like, I feel like they put it together for their church. I think it was not a YouTube... Like, it was going to be a short. And then someone knew Kurt Cameron and asked him to help out. And he's like, all right, yeah. And then he didn't know what it was until he showed up. And... I don't know. Because I've heard people say that... Um, that other movie his previous movie before that also had a bunch of slow motion and, and didn't make any sense. Oh, really? What was his other one? Cause I know he did left behind. We had to watch a, a thing. He did like a Bible study thing in high school at youth group. There's fireproof. He was in that fireproof. Fireproof is not a terrible movie, but I think it's less evangelistic than most because it's more focused on marriage. Mm -hmm. oh. And that's, that was their goal. Yeah. I mean, that's, I think that's what I, um, that's the Kendrick brothers. And I don't know. I, I think that I, I'm not defending them, Yeah. but I, I do think that they at least, they always make their kind of movie. Yes. And it's not, they're not jumping on bandwagons. And I think that that's what I do look up and respect them for is that they they at least are um they're they're at least they're, sincere in that regard i think they're, they're not like oh what's the latest trend okay uh person you know they yeah. they know what they believe they say those things and i may not always agree with it but they are at least they they at least are making movies about things they believe and not just cashing in yeah i i think they're amateurs who are trying to get better and I think yeah. they're actively with each one. They seem to get a little better. I, don't, I didn't see War Room. They definitely are that. The, but, War Room's not a better movie, but it looks better. Yeah. And so um, I think it just it this takes this next movie. will be interesting because I spoiler alert. I uh, helped out a little bit on the script. Oh, did you? Yeah. I. I it's not. Uh, I'll, I'm interested to see what they actually do in the end with it because I don't know how much of my notes they'll actually use. Did you just plug your YouTube channel over and over? And just, yeah, I actually, <laughs> there's this part where these uh, these people are, it says in the script that they're look at, watching videos on their phone. Yeah. And I'm like, if this isn't a Say Goodnight Kevin video, I'm going to be really disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I don't think they'll do it. But that would be awesome if they did. <laughs> So the movie's called Unstoppable, and it's uh, Where is God in the Midst of Tragedy and Suffering? Okay. Which sounds like a great topic to explore. Yeah. Uh, but it's also a Liberty University oh, okay, yeah. 
produced that that's that's the thing with this movie with uh with saving, saving christmas, christmas is that Liber- liberty was behind it in some regard yeah yeah liberty has an agenda for sure i think they're only outdone by maybe bob jones and yeah a lot of it, it is- well they're a different kind of i always think of liberty in that kind of world is a new kind of legalism yeah <laughs> you know or or legalism in genes <laughs> there you go yeah it's not i went to a school called north greenville university which is in south carolina okay and it's it's a southern baptist school yeah. which i know liberty isn't southern baptist but close enough yeah i think it i don't know what denomination liberty baptist college it is a baptist college um or it was at one point um anyway my point is that uh there's this deception in christianity where if you're not acting like bob jones or pensacola yeah. then you must be better than them <laughs> you know like oh we're free in christ because yeah. we we're not wearing long denim skirts and and we're not you know yeah we're we're cutting our hair guys only allowed so, on the right side left side i don't yeah. know whatever it is <laughs> so stupid <laughs> we're not super like that's that's an extreme legalism yeah uh but but there's other kinds of legalism you know they i, I think of you know baptists don't believe in you know loss of salvation uh, or or works based salvation, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but they do believe in post salvation works based maintenance. Yes. Yeah. And I I think that that gets really, really uh, legalistic then because you're you're now you're now looking at the main t- like it, well if you didn't if you're not acting you know if you're not working hard enough then maybe you weren't saved at all. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And and I don't like that. I think that that's it's a different kind of legalistic uh thinking but it's still just as toxic and maybe even worse because they think that they're not pharisees yes well ultimately it all comes down to control wanting to control people through religion which all religions do you hit it and it's something we as christians need to be very aware of as whether you're leading or following i say this a lot and people don't understand it, so I don't know why I'm going to say it again, but I'll say right. it. Uh, I think every 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 belief has the tendency to turn into a religion. Yes. And I think that religion, obviously, uh, the, another cliche of Christianity is uh, religion is bad trying to get to God. Yeah. And uh, Christianity is God uh reaching out to man or something like that yeah. but it is true and that's that's i think they took that from mere christianity they, they when i read mere christianity i found all these ideas mm-hmm. that were explained that i heard the cliche one-liner said uh by christians all the time and i feel like nobody ever actually read the book just one guy read the book and then they just <laughs> quoted those lines <laughs> but <clears throat> excuse me uh I, I I think that there's that level to where um, I look at Christianity. This is this is if we get down to it, this is why I still believe in Christianity. Right. It's because it's the one thing that when when it's at its core, when it's at its purest, it's not a religion. Yeah, like religions are so. Like what you said, it's all about control. It's all its all a list of rules. Here's your list of rules that you got to follow in order to be in God's favor, which usually is in the favor of whoever the king or the priest or the pastor is. Yes. And Christianity, in its true, like what the Bible says, seems to be not that, yeah. which is weird. Like that's, it's weird because that's not, every time there's a religion, it's always the same thing you know it gets it gets tiring it's all the same color yeah. you know it's it's just well here's here's another one how about this one yeah. and christianity although scientology C- cs lewis that's yeah. that's got some flavor to yeah it. right that's legalistic <laughs> check out uh check out the whoever the president of scientology is his father was in scientology yeah. and like escaped the scientology church and he has a podcast and it's it's I don't listen to it all the time, but is, I've heard his story, and it's very fascinating Ron, and very scary because it's it's very much a cult. Ron Miscavige? Is that his name? Could be. Miscavige is the I last name. 
but I don't know. Okay. Anyways. Yeah. Check that out. Yeah. It's very fascinating, very scary, uh, really sad. Uh, but all religions do that. Yes. You're right. They all, it's all control. It's the temptation of power. It It's too, uh, it's too tempting. Yeah. And, and it's easy to fall into, I think, because you look at, um, because it it's just, you start speaking as if though you know stuff. Yeah, yeah. Because people listen. And you don't. And you're like, oh, I yeah. must be right. I'm yeah, God, well, God, I prayed this morning, and I must be speaking from, you know. I, I, I don't know if you watched that Netflix series about the, the – the, it's pretty hard to watch, but about the priest who murdered the nun. and I didn't watch the – is like Secret Keepers? Is that stuff. one of those? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't Something watch like that, that one. I, I've seen it, and I've thought about it, and I'm like, I just – Yeah, it's hard. Emotionally. I, I don't think I ever finished it because it, it's the – most evil yeah i've ever seen and heard about it's just it's awful and disgusting but the the but I, it's so it's so believable yeah it's understandable that's how, what's or scary not about it because you're like okay this is mm, i could see this happening yeah because they're using and it's the temptation of people in the church yeah you know mm-hmm. i mean think of the lives that are destroyed by these priests and stuff you know they're 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 destroying lives and they're turning people away from the church because they don't really believe it yeah and i don't know man that like that that sort of thing it's super dangerous and and it is it's all about power and control yeah and that's what people see. That's what you talk to any atheist, and that's what they'll reference that. Like, look, look at all the people trying to control other people. Yeah, and they're right. Like, I can't say, oh, yeah, no, that's not the real church. No, they're right. That is happening. Yeah, like you look at Kenneth um, Copeland asking for a second private jet, and it's like, oh, maybe that's not <laughs> not a good representation of yeah my beliefs. And I think that's why, because I've thought about, you know, should I should I change, you know. Like mm-hmm. people know that Christian movies are bad. Should I branch out? Um, you know, I've had people comment and say that. Like, well, we all know this is kind of like low hanging fruit and stuff. Yeah. Um, but I think it's important. I I think I have. I don't know if I still have it on my channel, but it said something like the accountability partner uh, nobody asked for or something like <laughs> that. <laughs> and I I do think that there is something important about me not being funded by anybody other than the people who watch yeah just keep keeping a watchful eye on these movies uh as a christian because there's a lot of atheists who review christian movies and they're like could you believe these idiots are christians yeah and to me that's not a film <clears throat> critique yeah, yeah that's just you know and it's fine that has that pl- that has its place and i think that that can be funny but you know, and I'm not. I don't want to act like I've got this great higher calling, but I I do think that that's why I don't branch out too much. There's there's a lot of Christian movies out there, and there there is the potential for a lot of evil to happen. Yeah, well, uh, be, with with people in in the world of Christianity, and I think nothing saddens me more than that. I can get real amped up about politics, but. I always think, man, I'm going to change my mind soon. But I don't think I'll ever change my mind <laughs> whenever it comes. I probably won't change my mind on politics, but still. Uh, <laughs> it's not as important. <laughs> but I don't think I'll ever change my mind when it comes to the need to call out people who are abusing Christianity. Yeah, so that's that's the thing about in the Bible when Christ flipped over the tables, right? People all want to talk about, oh, the self-righteous anger. That's a, or the, the righteous anger, not self-righteous. That's mm, a different yeah. thing. <laughs> um, that's a different thing. <laughs> <laughs> the righteous anger of Christ is something that we can uh, model when things are unfair in Christianity are coming at us. And it's like, no, no, that's righteous anger against the church. That's the yeah. the church taking advantage of the uneducated, I almost said the dumb, that's what which is accurate, but the uneducated, Some the poor, people. the, you know, anyone who isn't aware of what's going on, they're taking advantage of them, making money off of yeah. them. And he's like, yeah, you are doing this all wrong. You are the problem. And that's where the righteous anger is held 
consistently in the Bible is against the church, is against God's people, and sometimes outside of that, but mostly at the people who are claiming to be his. That's where God's anger yep. is directed. Yeah. And Well, why? Who cares what people who aren't Christians are doing? Yeah. Like, that's not... Why, they never said they were going to. Yeah. I think that's why I have that perspective of, you know, just take care of yourself first. Yeah. Because who, who said that who said that people who aren't Christians are going to act like Christians? Or that they, they should. They certainly yeah. didn't. You know, why, why do you care? I mean, I care about people, but about controlling other people, um, you know, everybody's figuring out their life. Yeah. I think, hopefully. Yeah, when I first found your channel, I was like, oh, this guy's definitely not a Christian. And then I was watching him. Because <laughs> I was like, well, he sounds reasonable, and I haven't found a lot of Christians on the internet that I feel that way because there's there's a lot of pandering to everyone if you're going to do Christian stuff on the internet. Because if you have one thing that doesn't line up, it's easy to just be excommunicated from that group. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, oh, well, this guy's not a Christian. Then you said something about the supertones. I was like, okay, well, he grew up in the church for sure. <laughs> and you said and then it was just like the more i watched your video it's like oh no maybe he is a christian and it was like very clear that you i don't know if frustrated is a, a, the right word or the word that you would use but with just how weak christians have become with the media with what they're trying to represent and who they're trying to be and i, I just want why don't they punch people like Santa? exactly did? that's the movement we're that's starting. what i want punch an atheist hashtag Say goodnight, Kevin. An atheist. That'll that'll trick them. <laughs> that'll get them on board. But uh, well, thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. I, I like. I don't. I don't hide it that I'm a Christian. Yeah. And I think that that's part of what my uh, it it it's part of my overall point in proving that you can be a Christian. It's not because you're a Christian that that people hate you. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's because your movie sucks. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the, well, it gives us me, a defense, kind of the, right? That gives the Christian right. movie makers this weird defense of because there was okay, so there was a, a a missionary group here that got called out on a lot of their fundraising tactics hmm. being bad, which I think, yeah, that's probably not the best way to do this. And but all the Christians came around and like, oh, you're just getting attacked because you're Christian. I was like, no, no, guys, there's a legitimate concern here. Like, you're you're misleading people at the least and maybe even more nefarious than that but like christians just surround it and be like oh you're you're just being attacked because you're christian we, yep. we support you and it's like no no we shouldn't mm. we need to be more critical of the people who represent us than anyone else we need to hold them to the highest standard because what they are doing is in your name as well mm -hmm. but. yeah i mean it, it, i've had people say look the the world is already criticizing christians enough do we really need it from other Christians? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's who we need it from. Yeah. Because, you know, like I said, Pendulette will say things, but he doesn't know. Yeah. I know. I, I mean, I don't know everything, but I know probably more than Pendulette does yeah. about faith and evangelism and that sort of thing. Uh, but I also have a, a, a rebellious streak yeah. <laughs> in me that likes to, if people tell me I'm not allowed to make fun of something, that's what I want to yeah. make fun of. So there's that too. So all that gets mixed in. And I think on top of that, because I don't have a, um, I, I don't have to worry about funders. Yeah. Uh, if, if, if I needed to go out and get a job and just, do this on the side that's what i was doing for most of the time i've had a youtube channel anyway so i'll just do that yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so i i don't have to worry about well someone's gonna pull my funding if i criticize this christian movie um you know i i, I want people to i want people to feel confident that i'm there's no reason why i would sell out because i'm my first and foremost it's just me saying what I think yeah. and feel. And I want Christian movies and Christians to know, oh man, there's this guy who uh, doesn't doesn't defend us just because we're Christian, yeah. but he also, we can't write him off as just some jerk atheist who's attacking Christians. Yeah. 
you know? Yeah, no, I think I it's it, really important. I, and I also want, like I said, I want that argument to be able to say, look, I'm, I'm an openly Christian channel and atheists still watch my show. Yeah. It's it. And, and they don't have a problem with it. They're not, it's not. They're not, oh, let's not watch it because he's Christian. They may say, oh, let's not watch it because all he does is preach all the time. And that, that could be. But uh, I don't just preach all the time. I think I I try to maintain a pretty uh, humorous show, yeah. uh, pretty entertaining show. Yeah, no, I— Because that's all it is. Yeah. It, I, don't, I don't see any sort of—first uh, and foremost, there's no—it's not a ministry. It's just a YouTube channel. Yeah, and I think that's important. Yep. I think that I think Christians need to be aware of that when they do any anything, especially in entertainment. You can't give the gospel with something else. It should it, you can't do that. It just makes it difficult. It makes it muddy. Like mm-hmm. as a in missionary world, if you mm-hmm. start, you know, giving stuff out with the gospel, like you're like, oh, we're giving out a bunch of rice. Come here. We'll show the gospel while you're here. Mm. They're going to lie to you. They're going to be like, yeah, yeah, I'm a Christian. Yeah. And then you get to go and say, yep. oh, we we made 2,000 new Christians today, like support our ministry. And it's like this weird, mm. we, we know we're lying to each other, but it's okay because it helps. It's this weird, like, you scratch my back, I scratch yours type of relationship. It's like, no, that's not mm. at all what this is supposed to be. But everyone. Yep. It's, and, and justifies the means. I mean, that's what led to. You know, that's why South America is, you know, is very, um, is very confused. I think a, a lot of South America is confused on what Catholicism is, yeah. because there was just this get them in, get get them to sign the paper, get them yeah. to convert, and there was no discipleship. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah, and, no, for sure. And that's that's not. I mean, and that was a mixture of, of politics and religion um, that, I don't know. It's just, yeah, you're right. I mean, I, I saw that when I was, for the brief time I was a missionary, was that, you know, there's there's a numbers game because that's how you raise support. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. it's very hard to come to a church and say, hey, so there are three people that we're discipling right now. Yeah on on the mission field and that's not impressive you can't show a a a slideshow of that yeah well especially when you have you're competing right like every yeah every dollar is going to be taken by someone and there's a lot of people willing to lie for it so it's Mm. and the sad part is people want to be lied to like they don't care to look into it they don't care to investigate they don't care to understand more they're just like oh yeah that sounds good that sounds like i'm being effective here's Here's my 20 bucks mm. or whatever. And it's like, yeah, everyone needs to my take wife, responsibility on both sides of it. Whether you're supporting yeah. missions or you're a missionary, you got to. My wife works for a nonprofit and, and, but they focus on humanitarian efforts yeah. and not evangel evangelism. Uh, and they're, they're, they're a Christian, they're Christian people. Yeah. Uh, but their goal is helping people. Yeah, yeah. And there are other, because there are other ministries that, and there are other organizations that do evangelism, yeah. but they don't want to conflate the two for that very reason that they don't. Well, we came to help you so that you'll convert. Yeah. yeah I think um, both are and, great, but they, when you yeah. mix them, it's like, mm, that gets really sketchy. It, it becomes, and, and that's, uh, I'm, let's see one more offensive, right. uh, partisan thing. Uh, <laughs> I tend to be, I tend to lean a little bit towards the side of God being in control of everything. Yeah. Uh, though I, I believe that we live from the perspective of we don't, we don't see that. We don't, I, I, like, we don't, we don't know how it works. Yeah. So the reason why I believe that is because I think if, if we believe that it has anything to do with us, that people become Christians uh, in the sense that, we it's our responsibility to change their hearts uh it leads to a lot of deception like exactly what you're talking about um and we see it in america where we do emotional altar calls yes where it's like you know 
Let's just one person. Just good. I see that hand. Come on down to the front. We need one more. Per, you know, this kind of manipulation. Yeah. And I think that it's really important to just not to believe what I believe, not to be a Calvinist or whatever, but to be aware of the danger of manipulation when it comes to sharing what you believe yeah. and and what can motivate that. Because if it is up to us to, to get people saved, then then it justifies that. Yeah. And that's uh, a lot of evil has been done in the past in the with the justification that we got to get people saved. Oh, and yeah. And that's what the Crusades did. <laughs> yeah. And that's what they did in South America to to, to burn the feet of, of natives and stuff. And Yeah. Yeah, what I that, tried to... I don't believe in that stuff. You don't believe any of that stuff happened? <laughs> no, I don't believe that <laughs> no, it's good kidding. to do that. Yeah. No, I gotcha. <laughs> I don't believe the Middle Ages happened. <laughs> it's all a lie made up by historians. Yeah, what I try to tell people now is like, or at least my understanding is like, it doesn't matter. Like, I don't need to keep track of what I've done. God is aware of all of it. And that's the only person I'm going to be accountable to at the end. Mm -hmm. And so my goal is not to have, you know, have led 10,000 people to Christ. My goal is just to get an assist on the board, to help out where I can and to be faithful to what's in front of me. And that's my yep. responsibility as a missionary or as a Christian is to follow where God is leading and do that well. And that's it. Yeah. But, and we don't know what it looks like. You know, yeah. like on God's, from God's yeah. end. We know what it looks like from our end, and that it's very foggy. Yeah, yeah it's a little messy on this side. Yeah, well, so. Well, man. Man, that. Yeah, I appreciate that's this. good stuff. This is a good time. Didn't. This is, I don't, I don't know how entertaining this was, <laughs> but I've really enjoyed yeah, the conversation. <laughs> me too. I really appreciate you coming I on. I hope that I've, I've given you an entertaining episode. I, you know, like you said, I, I enjoyed it. I don't care. My people that's who listen, all, that's what people watch. That doesn't really matter. They're like, man, that's what the least important. That's the to best me. kind of content to make. Yeah. Like, I wanted to do this. That's every every good project I've been involved in is, you know, okay. I don't care if anybody pays attention to this, but I'm gonna have a lot of fun with this. Well, I only do it so it gives me a reason to do it. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, the yeah. only reason I record it is like, otherwise I'd be, like, hey, Kevin, you want to just talk to me for two hours? <laughs> for what <laughs> um okay <laughs> but let me look at my calendar but yeah man no i really appreciate it we didn't really talk about any of the movies but i don't that doesn't really matter to me we <clears throat> we talked about a lot of movies yeah. i think you'll be surprised yeah maybe but uh but uh yeah, yeah i highly recommend seeing that uh saving christmas, saving christmas. It's the great movie. <laughs> the best favorite one. 10 out of 10. That's what I do. That's we've, We're translating it into Burmese right now, so we can use that over Christmas as an evangelism <laughs> tool. I think that's the best way to go you about know, it. You know, I don't know if you've seen any of the Donkey Ollie videos that I've done, but uh, it's this cartoon that's supposed... I guess it's made for kids. It's so bad, yeah. but that's kind of their whole thing is... I think they're tricking people too. I think that's a, a, a big Ponzi scheme or something, yeah. but they're always translating it. Look, we got oh, we got this show yeah. translated into a hundred different languages. Yeah. And it's like, but the, it, the show's terrible. What is, <laughs> what is What's the, the goal here? It's not yeah. good in any capacity. It's not good quality. It's not the, what you're, you're not teaching anything yeah. good. I think that's the most fun is the, the very out of touch, stupid things that it teaches. Yeah. That, that, yeah. Anyway, I could go on about that, and I have. You could go watch the videos if you want to know more. Well, how can people find your stuff? What's the best way to get hold just of you? Just the YouTube channel, YouTube. Just say goodnight, Kevin, if you search that, or youtube.com slash say goodnight, Kevin. Uh, that's where I'm at. Cool. And, yeah, I totally recommend your channel. I think it's a lot of fun. You make so do I. great content. And the <laughs> I think your, Thank pers you very your much. perspective is really good on all of it. And I don't mean to just inflate your ego because – you're a, you're a bad it's person big right now. at core, but your content is good, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah, I'm a terrible, terrible guy. <laughs> just, ask, I'll just ask people who claim that they're going to unsubscribe and then don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, again, I appreciate this. Me and Taylor will be back in a couple of days with, I think, Too Fast, Too Furious. I think that's our next movie. But uh, yeah, thanks again, Kevin. Thank you very much.